America is many things to many people. It's all races, creeds, and religions. Look at all those cameras back there. Look at it, look at it. Hello, folks, how you doing, you son of a guns? I think that so many of us are really having a hard time coming to terms with what it means to be an American anymore. No matter who wins, the next president faces enormous challenges in trying to unify the country. The U.S. voters go to the polls today to elect a new president. And now it's up to the American people. The 45th president of the United States of America, President Donald Trump. Watching the election results come in and seeing that there was way more support for this other person than I ever could have thought possible. It just occurred to me that I really don't know my country at all. I suppose, yeah, I suppose when it comes to, to running, it is one of the first things that I kind of, you know, identified as something that I could maybe not do better or faster than, than everybody else, but it, it definitely was a way for me to stand out. I've been uh, kind of a professional runner for about the past decade, depending on how you define that term professional. Uh, I guess I am in the sense that I make my living doing it. I have traveled uh, all over the place, all over South America, Africa, New Zealand, Japan, Antarctica. I've been to nearly every country in Europe, uh, the UK, Mexico, Canada. I've been traveling off and on for I guess the past 15 years or so. I've had this great opportunity to see the entire world, uh, both through my own means and, and through the community of running and races. And I remember distinctly on November 8th, being in Madison, Wisconsin, watching the election results come in, just realizing that there's so much of the United States that I know nothing about. And, uh, you know, it, 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 I was looking at a map of, of the United States and realizing that I'd spent more time in, in Germany than I had uh, in the entire South, that I'd spent more time in the UK than I had in Kansas. You know, Kansas is right next door to Colorado, and I don't think I'd ever been to Kansas before. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted to see the country. The president-elect to become president today. Donald Trump takes the oath of office as the 45th president of the United States today. I don't have a single person, with the exception of my own dad, that I know voting for Donald Trump. And, uh, you know, how can we have a discussion if we don't even know someone on the other side of the argument? My dad's from Cleveland, Ohio. My mom's from New York, from Long Island. Um, they both met in Aspen, Colorado in the late 1960s. I've always been very close to my mom. You know, I can look back on a lot of these uh, 
these little trips that my mom would take us on when I was growing up. She'd pack the car with, with all five kids and drive out to the desert and we'd spend a, a few days out in Arches National Park and another time my mom piled all of the kids into a 16 passenger van and drove us all out to California. You know, my mom was doing that all by herself. I'd say that had a huge impact on uh, who I later became. I said, this guy's gonna win. He's gonna be a great president. He's gonna be our Reagan. He's gonna cut you. I'm saying I'm a politician, but I guess that's what I am now. You know, in kindergarten, I insisted on wearing a, a button-up shirt and a tie, despite the warnings from my parents and my siblings that it might get me beat up, and, and sure enough, it did. And I started dating my girlfriend, Liz, about six or seven years ago, and I haven't had a whole lot of direction in my adult life. I've, I've kind of been a wanderer. Liz is kind of the opposite of that, and I've definitely been attracted to that as a sense of stability. I'm not a person that believes in the one true love, and I was really putting that to the test, and uh, I told her that I needed to get things figured out, and uh, so it wasn't long after the election, I, um, I Liz and I, decided to go separate ways uh, and drove away from Wisconsin, very confused, uh, knowing that I've got this big trip coming up ahead and convincing myself that I needed to be alone for it. Oh my God, look at this place. Holy shit, that dude's got a tattoo on his arm. And uh, yeah, I arrived in Charleston, South Carolina, and uh, that's where my journey began. A few weeks before I got there, I put an ad up on Craigslist saying, uh, um, you know, good condition, selling it for a thousand bucks. I need to sell it at nine o'clock in the morning on March 1st. Uh, whoever's, whoever's there to buy it has it. Met Brianna, who uh, kicked the tires and took the car for a little test drive and, and handed over a thousand bucks. And for a little fee, she uh, agreed to drive me out to Folly Beach about 10 miles away and drop me off. Look at that, the Atlantic Ocean. Made it. The easy part's done. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Good luck on your trip. Thanks a lot. Fucking crazy. Uh, so the plan, let's see, how did I come up with this? <clears throat> um, the record across the United States is uh, something like 42 days. It was set just a couple years ago by Pete Kostalnik. And I had absolutely no intention or desire to go for that record. It was something that wasn't interesting to me. Um, the goal of my journey was to experience places in the United States that I hadn't been before and I didn't know the people there. And so my plan was to 
go across the country on foot and on river. And I figured the distance would be about a marathon a day, um, adding up to a total of about 3,700 miles. So sleeping out, I was going to try as much as I could to find natural shelter and it was going to be cold food uh, while I was traveling the whole time with the exception of what I could buy. Here we are in Charleston, South Carolina, Folly Beach, about to start off on 35 mile, 35, I wish it was 35 miles, 3,500 mile run across the United States. Um, not such a fan of ocean water, but there we go. So here we go, doing it. with a backpack barely weighing 12 pounds. Um, you know, the change of underwear, toothbrush, sleeping bag, sleeping pad, just barely enough of a shelter to keep me dry and warm. I, uh, I turned my back on the Atlantic Ocean and started west towards the uh, Ocean Beach, California, 3,500 miles away. There's a, an incredible lack of fireworks right now. I don't think anybody around me cares at all. <laughs> Least of all, uh, Brianna, who I just sold the car to. Oh well, I suppose I should start running eventually. California isn't gonna come to me. It's really just, it's just a strange way to start a really big trip where no one really around you, including yourself, knows or appreciates what you've just taken on. It's, it's not like sailing away into the Atlantic or into the Pacific. It's, it's a really soft and comfortable beginning. He was good man, good man. Howdy. How you doing? <laughs> Good luck to you, buddy. Hey, thank you very much. I couldn't do it, I'll tell yeah. you that much. Uh, <laughs> way, way past my time to do that kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> well, it's fun. It's, I figure I do it while I can. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I had a few friends ask if they could join me for a, a day or two days or three days. And, I just requested that they pack light and be prepared to sleep out in the rain or under the stars if we're lucky. Thanks for coming out. I'm honored. I'm honored, man. Yeah. <laughs> so my friend Jeff joined me pretty early on in the trip. Yeah, watching good old caveman TV. I hadn't seen him in uh, almost 10 years, eight years maybe. And uh, the longest he'd run in the past few years was one mile. And he ended up doing about 70 miles with me over the course of two and a half days. Top of the that was good. <laughs> How's it going? Thank Where you, Charles Sames. Uh, Ricky. Nice to meet you. Ricky. I'm Jeff. Jeff. Cool. That's Chopsticks. What's your name? Um, Skibo. Skibo. Skibo and Chopsticks. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, it was fun. It was just a... Uh, it was a way to make the trip not so serious. And having a friend come along for a day or two 
kind of lightens the experience a little bit. I'm looking at a gator. We saw a bunch of gators. What? You did? Yeah. yeah. You don't eat too much daddy down here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I started in Folly Beach uh, a few days ago. Folly Beach? My yeah. Lives in Folly Beach. Oh, yeah? Y'all walk, y'all y'all drive, or y'all jog on the video. Yeah, sure did. <laughs> Woo! Yo, Jog, y'all in San Francisco. San Francisco. That's the idea. Oh, stop your crazy. Yeah. God bless you. <laughs> well, that's good. For yeah. You so where do y'all expect to get there? I'm hoping by August 1st. Whoa, help Jesus. <laughs> that's neat though. What are you running for? Uh, just on my own, wanted something I've always wanted to do. Wow, yeah. Nice chatting with you. Right. Yeah. Right. See you, Hefe. Yeah. Best of luck. They flip. I will. We live in an age where it's becoming so easy to live in separate bubbles. My friends all do the same things that I do. Um, they generally believe the same things that I believe. They vote the way I vote. Same goes for my family. For the first time this trip, I'm actually alone, which is uh, kind of nice, but I miss my buddies, and I miss having someone carry my shit. We have what appears to be our first hill of the trip. Day seven. We're out in the woods. I don't really know what I had anticipated as far as conversations would go along the way. The route that I picked out was across, I believe, 11 states, and either eight or nine of those were states that voted uh, favorably for Donald Trump. I wanted to experience and see and feel, you know, the what all of this is all about on my own level and remove NPR, remove Fox, remove CNN from this equation and go talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. I've heard about you, what's your name? What's your name? I'm Scott Ward. Scott Ricky. And then one without smiling, and one super serious. Wow. That's great. It's my wife's cousin. We're good you, friends. Oh, cool. We'd be friends even if we weren't related. Yeah, you're supposed to say that. No, it's true. <laughs> he doesn't know what that means. Wait, I'm short? No. Oh, him. Yeah. We could actually go over there. Well, that's true. No, you're good. Yeah, you guys. There you go. Cheese, love, cheese. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> This culture can be everything. Can be everything. Uh, I, I respect everybody. Re re respect your, your work, respect different people, respect the color, you know. And, uh, the most important is like humble in your heart. And, and I love the people, I love the country, I love the weather, I love the, my work. I love talk with you, and it's amazing talk with you because right now you are here. Tomorrow, I don't know where you are. <laughs> and what you gonna do with all these pictures? I don't know, keep them together and so I can remember my trip. All right. Uh, you started there, you started in Charleston? <laughs> yes, sir. And you're gonna go um, to the West Coast? Yep. Oh, that's great. Yeah, man. about 10 days in. Oh, oh, oh yeah. how about your gear and stuff? It's all here. That's all you got? Yeah. Oh, you're real lightweight. Oh, you got yeah. a hammock you sleep in or 
Uh, it's just a tarp and a ground cloth and a couple, a little bit of twine to, to pitch it, pitch it down. So, like I said, I get, I get high out here. Yeah, and there you go. Say what you're taking. That's what I look where I'm at. You know, I don't, I don't need nothing. If you need something, if you need something to get high in, uh, when you're out in the beautiful country that, that God made, yep. that man had destroyed. You got to get away from the man-made ugliness. Yeah. To get out there where God made it is beautiful. Like that. What do you need? People just took an incredible amount of interest in what I was doing, and, and they were just really psyched to see that someone was attempting to run across the country. You know, I'm not the first person to do this, um, but in the eyes of a lot of these people that I met in those first few days, in those first few weeks, the only other person that they knew of doing something like this was this fictitious character in a movie from the 90s, you know, Forrest Gump. Supposedly it might snow tomorrow night in the low mountains. Hopefully that's not where I am right now. What the fuck? It's fucking snowing. This is bullshit. My phone is about to die, which has the directions on there. My rain gear was a poncho, which was also my tent. I had absolutely no first aid kit. I knew that no matter what route I chose or what time of year, I was gonna have to deal with weather. About 7.30 in the morning. I'm in South Carolina for one more day. It just rained all night long and I found out that this tarp is not a hundred percent waterproof. Dude. Anyway, I'm gonna get 20 more minutes of sleep. We're uh, crossing the Chattooga River, leaving South Carolina behind me and Georgia just ahead of me. There's Georgia, moonwalking into Georgia. You're putting yourself out there without protection. You're putting yourself out there in a vulnerable situation. And I think that's appealing to, to everybody and anybody. It's a, uh, it's a way for us to start a conversation. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, I, I ain't, I ain't met nothing but the best folks so far. I've been on the trail two weeks. What's your all names? David Colton. All right. Sometimes I just look at the map and go and. Yeah, I didn't realize I was going to be on a dirt road next to a beautiful creek today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, I've never been to Georgia, never been to South Carolina, so I'm heading into Chattanooga. I've never been there. A lot of violence in Chattanooga. Huh. You know, I tried not to dwell too much on, on, on things that I would be afraid of. the Appalachian Trail and then sent me the wrong way <laughs> and uh, I was wondering if I had a gun for the uh, the copperheads and the rattlesnakes and mountain lions and bears and coyotes and wolves and 
said he hasn't ever seen a wolf out here, but it's because there aren't any. Not over here anyway, unfortunately. And then some really awesome guys outside the gas station <laughs> that told me about uh, how the folks 50 miles south of here are super sketchy. The ones here are all right. You know, this is the story that's being told over and over again to watch out for this person next door, this person that you probably don't any, know anything about. One town is telling me, you know, this is a great town. Uh, the next town over is, is full of weirdos, so just watch out. I get to that town and they're warning me about the next town. I'm on the uh, Appalachian Trail and it's just started snowing again. <laughs> but it sure is pretty. I suppose one of the things that I was hoping for was to show that there's one person, myself, that's not afraid, even though I am afraid. Whoa, this is the Appalachian Highway. Hi, how's it going? Good. Howdy. Good. Hello. Hello. There's more of you, come on by. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> come on through. Look at this view. The final few meters of the Appalachian Trail. I tell you what, I'm whooped. Do you make all these? Yeah? He's good. Well, uh, would I be able to get some water from your spigot here? What, drinking? Yeah, drinking water. Oh, no. We, you don't drink this water in how much. This water ain't too fit to drink much. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Mm -hmm. Well. Well, all right, well, thank you very much. Okay, all yeah. right. Yeah, I'm gonna carry on. From the very beginning of the trip, I took into account the history of the United States and westward expansion. And, and you look at any of the big journeys that were undertaken in the 1800s, if you could take advantage of traveling on the river, then you would do that. My, my plan was to, to travel from Chattanooga, Tennessee, across northern Alabama and back into Tennessee, which was about 300 miles. The very first day getting onto the Tennessee River was a very steep learning curve. It took me about an hour and a half to cover the very first mile. It's just going fucking great. Um, I've literally gone a quarter mile in one hour. This is brutal. And uh, have I mentioned I'm a little bit afraid of water? I am. I was going against an extreme headwind and thought almost immediately that I'd made a very big mistake. I called up Liz uh, when we were talking at that point fairly regularly and, and she just, uh, yeah, she comforted me on the phone and told me to relax and I did. And the wind calmed down and got back out on the river and continued on and managed to cover about 10 miles that first day. So I've got 
get a slight downriver breeze. I'm, uh, I'm gonna take advantage of it. So I got a uh, my trekking pole and my tarp. When you're out on the river, you're you're pretty much alone. There's boats going by you all the time, but nobody goes and takes their boat out onto the Tennessee River to go hang out and talk to a guy on a stand-up paddleboard. Jesus Christ! This does not make me feel good about myself. <laughs> the bugs are out. They can keep up with me apparently on the yeah, on the paddleboard. at the uh, the takeout and I'm gonna continue on foot to uh, the great Mississippi Memphis <laughs> McCrory, Arkansas, cool little town. Live the rest of the days around here where the trees are green. <laughs> los, los conocí uh, hace dos horas. Ah, uh, sí. Okay. We're camped next to a uh, railroad track. Getting the full brunt of it now. I think it's a hundred car train. On the highway, this is 96, 72. It's an even number, I know that. Yeah. What's your name? My name is Jim Steele. Jim Steele, I'm yes. Ricky Gates. Ricky Gates, can I make a donation to the cause? Oh, I, I, there is no cause. Can I, I make a donation? I appreciate that so much. I uh, I saved up my money for this trip and I, I know, I'm but, doing okay. But, uh, somebody pulled me out of the rabbit hole lately. Really? And there's gotta be a reason for it. And I figure it's to support well, your cause. I, I really appreciate you taking this moment are you, in the spirit that it's given. Well, I appreciate that. Thank that you. that just means a lot to me. Jim Jim Steele? Jim Steele. Jim Steele, can I get a picture of you before you leave? I'd be happy. Um, yeah, I've been collecting pictures of people that I meet along the way. It's been really wonderful. So there we go. I think that guy just gave me like 80 bucks. You know, I became the the neuron, the connector uh, that I was wanting to be from the beginning of the trip. You know that it it feels good to give, and and so many people, I was the receptacle for that. You're a at the wheel. Turning farther than you need, drifting in the I love this. I'm going west. Can you tell? The sun is in your eyes. Always west. The further sun upon your knee, and the things you cannot see, they pass in through the twist they see. Nothing's as powerful as something that you experience yourself. Will you grin and lift your head? Let the drums fall and stay. Woo, doggy. Fight a light instead of pain. 
see ourselves as 90% the same and 10% different and that 10% difference is is what the media latches on to is what a lot of politicians are latching on to right now oh thank you so much what's your name Samantha Samantha Ricky nice to meet you nice to meet you Yes, sir. Across the country. Yeah. I'm Tristan. I'm Colton. Hunter. Hunter and Becky. Beautiful Saturday morning. Oh. Awesome. Thank you so much. Very much, man. Yeah. Where are you right from? From uh, South Carolina. Oh, hey. Yeah. I don't want to walk into you, but I Yeah, that's funny. I don't what you're looking for. I appreciate it. There's this level of generosity, and people just, uh, they look after each other. We'll take care of you guys. Drive safe. It was not the wealthiest people that were giving me money. Hey. Oh, man, nice to meet you. Yeah, what's your name? Danny. Danny, nice to meet you. <laughs> I saw a picture of you, uh, I think, crossing into the States. Oh, my buddy Lyle's gonna be thrilled when I show him. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, thanks for stopping. You bet, man. You're, thanks. You're insanely awesome. Oh, cheers. I appreciate you saying so. I picked up a couple friends here. Stay. Stay. Gosh. All right, go. Go home. All right, bye, dogs. I doubt that's the last we see of them. Would you guys go home? You can't come to California with me. Would you guys go home? But they are gonna keep following me whether I tell them to go home or not. As you can see. The amazing thing is, is that I, uh, on my run across the country, I really didn't talk about politics all that much. Uh, I talked about the things that are actually important to us, and uh, and that was that was really telling to me. Well, I've made it to uh, this is the West. We're in the West now. Oklahoma, Arkansas is that way. That's the South, and this is the West. Uh, this state, Oklahoma, borders Colorado, my home state. So it's almost like I'm almost home, like 900 miles from home. These are big states. So here we go. Say goodbye to Arkansas. There goes Arkansas behind us. And now we're in Oklahoma. I really believed that I saw the the core of America, that I experienced the core of America. Hi, Mom. Here, listen real quick. Um, I had a few people that I would call when I was not having a great day. Uh, I'd oftentimes call my mom. She was very comforting and she appreciated the challenge that I was going through. I'd call my brother a lot, um, Liz quite a lot. Spoke to my dad uh, more than I have in years. This is full on uh, rain and lightning storm. I'm sleeping in a puddle again. I am uh, tired of sleeping in puddles. I can't even begin to tell you. As I'm getting older, I, I just notice that, you know, we're all imperfect and um, I'm not immune to any of the mistakes that my own dad has made. And uh, I suppose that's, uh, 
yeah, that's really hard. Empathy is, is uh, at the core of understanding and just appreciating that, you know, we're all complicated people. Um, and I don't, I think very few of us really have it figured out. I almost feel like saying that it, to get to know my own country was really almost a superficial answer of what I was doing. It's, it was definitely way more about getting to know myself. The physical challenge that I'm putting my body through is, is fairly substantial and just having exhausted legs, tired feet, swollen feet, and then trying to find a place to sleep every night. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it can be a little exhausting. So. Well, we gotta celebrate the little victories uh, along the way. Some of them a little bigger. Uh, I've come a long way from South Carolina to get to this sign. May 18th, I turned 36 years old today. I don't know if you've noticed, I got a few extra gray hairs in my beard here. Happy birthday to me. You. 36. Hi, it's my birthday. I thought of it as my briar patch, you know, you got the burr rabbit and, and uh, that, that fable of uh, the rabbit begging to not be tossed into the briar patch, which is actually his most comfortable area. You know, I, I was thinking about that, getting close to the Rockies, how that's my briar patch. That's, uh, you know, as rugged as they are, no matter what it throws at me, it's something that I'm super familiar with. And, can you see that camera? Mountains. I am here. I am so frickin' excited. Great venture across any terrain. People look at the mountains as the big challenge. And for me, waiting to see those Rocky Mountains was the, the carrot really far out in front of me. One forest? different forest. <laughs> 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 you know, you go through this humongous teaching experience only to come back right where you started, realizing that you knew everything to begin with and that you didn't have to do all of that. Liz wasn't the problem. Donald Trump isn't the problem. Um, and could I have done it differently? I'm not totally sure. I feel like I, I needed to go through that struggle. This is a reason to celebrate. <laughs> I'm having fun. Oh good, I'm glad. Yeah. my home, Aspen, Colorado. I grew up here. It's got everything that the world could possibly offer. My goals for this trip were to, to get to know my country a bit better, to see places that I hadn't been before, um, to push myself. And by the time I'd gotten to Colorado, I kind of felt like I'd checked all of those boxes. Wow. Most of the way across. It looks like I was going to go into Louisiana. I didn't touch Louisiana. To see this dream unfolding before me and, and then to look back on buying those maps and cutting them up and what can you say about that? It's, uh, it's really challenging to, to get two thirds the way into your trip feeling like you've accomplished everything and knowing that you still have 
1,500, 1,200 miles yet to go through arguably the most difficult terrain. In a way, you could say I was just burying my head in the sand. I just, uh, I didn't want to think about it. I've, I've had a lot of support from the community where I grew up over the years, and uh, this kind of felt like the height of that, like I was really being appreciated for what I was doing. Uh, the local newspaper did a story on me. You know, the, the New York Times could do a story on me and it wouldn't mean as much as the Aspen Times doing a story on me. You feel like a hero and uh, I just needed to absorb it. I just spent my time home enjoying the people around me and, and uh, enjoying my time there. A little forest dump is good. The whole deal, I can do without that. And, all right, that's it. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. Thanks so much. You're welcome. We'll see you, we'll see you when we see ya. Yep. Don't worry about me. I'm not sure what else I was really hoping to find out there. Yeah, it's hard to to get there and then then and, and know that you yeah, you have this weird goal of getting to the other side of the country and you have to leave all of that behind you. I've thought oftentimes throughout the course of my running career. You know, why am I doing this? Why is it important? What does it mean? What does this sport mean to me? What does running mean to me? And the funny thing is, is that I used to consider it a sport and now I don't consider it a sport at all. It's really just a medium. You know, it's gone from something that I've used as uh, a way to meet people, to a way to explore new countries, to a way to give myself some self-worth. Uh, and it's gone from that to something even deeper. It's, it's a way for me to get to know myself at the deepest level. It, it does happen in the blink of an eye when you're leaving the Rockies. It was just all of a sudden, my friends left and then I was in the desert. It wasn't just talk anymore. It kind of felt like all I had to do was just keep moving. It almost seems effortless how you play with blood. I mean, I guess that's what faith is, is uh, putting your yeah, trusting your yourself into a into a belief system. Yeah, you know, Edward Abbey broke down the human race into three simple categories. There's mountain people, there's desert people, and there's river rats. And uh, I'm definitely a mountain person. You make a fatal mistake with your moral dead solution. So I'm, uh, how am I looking? I don't look too bad. Uh, just over a hundred days in. Crossed into Utah yesterday. A little bit, uh, exhausted, a little depressed. I don't know if depressed is the right word, but, uh, I haven't been able to really digest food for the past few days. I feel like I'm losing weight rapidly and uh, I've got some really big scary desert coming up. It's supposed to be 110 degrees and gosh I just feel like I'm skin and bones right now. Uh, I've got uh, good old Jared following me with a pickup truck and water and food which I'm not really able to keep down. I was hoping I'd have some 
some more friends joined me that uh, didn't happen. But everyone's got their lives, I guess. You wake up every single day, and regardless of everything that's going on, whether in my personal life or uh, what's going on in our country, I have this singular goal, and that's what's driving me. You know, if you're not moving forward, then you're not reaching your goal. There's not many pursuits in life where it's that simple. Morning. It seems that I've got. What do I have, Jared? Heartburn? Indigestion. Indigestion. Acid reflux. Acid reflux. And we learned a little trick on the uh, internet this morning. Looks like we're in the wild, but we actually have really good phone service out here. A tablespoon, teaspoon of mustard. It's brutal but it worked this morning and I want my coffee, so I'm gonna do this. Whew. Oh gosh. It all happened really quick. I was in this comfortable little nest to all of a sudden being in this inferno where I'm genuinely concerned for my health and even worse if I'm gonna make it to a hospital if, if things turn bad really quick. Sorry for filming you, but... Oh, it's okay. I'd uh, lost all of the extra weight that I'd put on. And to top it off, I'm burning anywhere from four to 6,000 calories a day. And not taking in any calories, so I'm only at that point burning fat. And so I just started shedding weight really, really quickly. And I had a suspicion that I was uh, kind of going into a bit of a cave, which is pretty dangerous. I mean, you don't have to be a doctor to know that. I don't know how stupid I'm being. I still had 600 miles of desert still ahead of me and some of the hottest days still ahead of me and 100 mile stretches in between towns. And possibly worst of all, I adopted a, a mentality, almost convinced myself that, you know, this pursuit that I was going for was worth dying for. And, uh, and that it was a noble cause. And uh, I don't know. It's, it's funny that you can convince yourself of that. Trying to, yes. figure, trying to figure out a carrying system. A lot or what? We're going across the desert on foot. Oh, okay. Is it like your pack? Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is prototype, or is this... Uh... No, this is prototype. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
So I'm, uh, I'm experimenting a little bit with a golf caddy to carry more water and more supplies across the desert. Who'd have thought that you can be on the Appalachian Trail and have more access to supplies than on a major highway? I started carrying uh, two, to two gallons of water in a little golf caddy. Um, what's not so great is that I've been peeing blood for the past 24 hours, um, which has me a little bit worried. I learned pretty quickly that I wasn't able to keep my same running schedule. I tried uh, sleeping during the day and waking up at 5 or 6 or 7 in the evening and running all the way through the night. And so begins my night travel, I guess. And uh, I'm out of water. We're almost out of water. Daytime temperature is right around 105, getting close to 110 degrees. My weird stomach issues persist. I'm having a hard time keeping food down go for another few hours right now and then stay out of the sun for a while. I just couldn't sleep through the day. It wasn't possible. When it's 100 degrees, you can't sleep, you can't do anything. And so what I started to do was uh, wake up uh, before sunrise around 4.30 or 5 in the morning, right when the first birds started singing run until about 11.30 or noon, and then find some shade, either in a culvert or under a tree, or if I was really lucky in a town or at a bar, and hang out there until five in the afternoon, and then try and put in another five or six hours, run until about midnight. with much sadness saying goodbye to this guy but moving on to a shadier and more trustworthy mode of transportation goodbye desert cad the deserter I'm deserting you Hubcap. It's about midnight and we found a, uh, a pool to poach. As much as I was eager to get out of the desert, I don't know if I really wanted to stop either. I just felt like I was being stripped down to the, the most bare and pure version of myself. Here we are. Two more states left to go. But it's an amazing place, the desert. I don't think it's a mystery that, in biblical terms, that the, the desert is, is where Jesus goes to find himself and to be tempted by the devil. You know, it's where people are truly tested. 
it was, yeah, it was all self-reflection. First time I've ever traveled with a baby stroller before, I gotta admit, I kind of enjoyed it. Yeah talk to all day long. <laughs> One four niner. We've got a baby stroller here uh, going about four or five miles an hour across the uh, American desert. You're gonna probably have to seek some shade and get out of the sun. That's the same thing, seeking shade and getting out of the sun. <laughs> It seems to me that most environments you can, the human race has figured out how to bend to their will, but not the desert. The desert is, uh, the desert doesn't care. There's this, this purity of soul that you experience when you're out there for that long self-contained, self-sustained. It just instilled such a huge amount of relief to have that purpose day after day. You begin to leave the desert over a short period of time, over a few days and you know that it's coming to an end. Packing up the old, the old baby jogger, the horse with no name. You're still very much in the desert up until the crest of the, uh, of the Sierra Nevadas. This doesn't uh, say that we're out of the desert right now, then. I don't know what does, but uh, yeah, shit, Mount Rose, holy crap, and what is this, oh my god, there's Lake Tahoe, just this moment, crossed into the Sierra Nevadas, right there, I don't know, we're about five miles from the California border. I was hoping for a little bit more uh, fanfare or celebration or something to welcome me into my final state on this trip. There's no state line for the California Nevada border, so I decided to make my own. Here we are, walking into California. And that's it, that's the last state. Hi there. How are you? Hi, you look vigorous. <laughs> I'm moving along, yep. Way to go. Yeah. How much water have you got? Enough. Yep. Which is what? Uh, enough. <laughs> yeah. One liter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now, I'll take you, care. What's your name? My name's Ricky Gates. Ricky Gates. Okay. Yeah. Remember, all right. Yeah. I'm, I'm all set. Okay. Thanks. Right. Take care. Okay. Bye. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> It was my last night alone on the trip, and that's that was kind of when it really occurred to me the most, that I'd finished the trip. We're only about seven miles, six miles, five miles from the uh, Pacific Ocean. Uh, getting a little nostalgic. I don't know really what to make of all of this. Uh, so I'm just going to keep enjoying the sunset. It's just too pretty. So 
yeah, waking up in those hills and it's just those final few hours, the final day of being by myself and knowing that I wasn't gonna experience that solitude again on the trip. And who knows, maybe never again in life. I don't know, it's hard to say. See that there? That doesn't look like the ocean, but that's the ocean. After that, I just, uh, I anticipated the busyness of, of people coming, of my mom and brother coming, of meeting up with Liz and the excitement of all of that. And I knew that I wasn't going to be able to t quite take it in. Yeah, I guess as far as people go, you know, this trip was so much about people and I just had no idea, you know, what kind of people I was going to meet. And because, uh, you know, if, yeah, it's like thinking of a color that, that you've never seen before. If you, if you haven't seen it, you can't imagine it. Lauren and Tanya Reba, my name is Ricky. Real cowboys have a motorcycle. Wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we say shit? <laughs> Where are we? You guys are beautiful. And you'll find a lot more people on your way. Yeah, <laughs> Mother hates you. <laughs> I feel like after going across the country that I'm more similar than different. Whereas before I went on this trip, I I thought I was more different than similar. Hello. <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. Woo! All right. Yeah. To to claim to be an American, uh, man, what are what are you actually claiming? Um, it has nothing to do with the color of your skin, or what religion you practice, or what religion you don't practice. Um, I think most of all, it yeah, it's the the freedom uh, to do or not do, or to say or not say, all of those things to be whoever you want to be. I think that we all have a million different versions of ourselves, depending on which path we choose to take. I think I could feel that then, where you can see everything from the San Francisco airport to downtown San Francisco to the Golden Gate Bridge. You can see airplanes coming and going and ships coming and going and the BART train and, and freight trains. And, you know, you can see all of this happening and there's a million, two million people down below you. And there's just this pulse of humanity and this is just one city of 50 cities on a planet with a thousand cities that size and that's when you kind of begin to realize that you really don't know anything at all and that it's just one little thing it's just one little experience. I thought I learned who I was, but I learned who I was in that context. And that context isn't sustainable. Or if it is sustainable, you know, do I really want to continue down that path? 
right now, the path that I'm on is just being a guy and living in Oakland, California with a girlfriend and, and uh, rent and insurance and, and we're figuring out where we're going next and you know this is one version of me right now and I'm trying to be that best version the sooner that we're able to realize that you know we can't be more than one person at one time the sooner that we're able to be content being the person that we are So if I've learned anything, that's what I've learned, is to appreciate who I am, where I am, when I am, and who I'm with. I think that would have solved a lot of problems in the past for me. And I hope it'll continue to solve problems in the future for me. You know, although I'll have this journey of running across the states for the rest of my life, uh, it'll never be as rich as it, as it was when I was doing it. So what does that leave me with? I'm not totally sure, other than I know that I did do it and that it was beautiful and sad and happy and challenging and easy and hot and cold and straight and narrow and curvy and yeah, it was everything. I have to appreciate what I did and and leave it behind and appreciate what I'm doing at this current moment. Life is just a big fat story When it ends, another begins Don't take it so seriously Take it more mysteriously Darling, darling, darling I love you so much I don't know where I'm going from here But I promise that it won't be boring Darling, darling, darling I love you so much One day you will Oh.